Hi, my name is Jen with the San Diego River Park Foundation. We are so excited for Clean Air Day 2020, and we thank you for joining us by growing your own tree. Trees are a beautiful part of our natural world, providing clean air, good water quality, carbon storage, and so much more. Let's head over to our preserve coordinator, Chase, in the field to see what he has to share with us about the importance of trees. Hey everyone, my name is Chase Stafford, Preserve Coordinator for the San Diego River Park Foundation, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about trees. Trees, like all other plants, is a process called photosynthesis, which converts sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water into food or energy for the plant, but also creates oxygen for us to breathe. Now take a nice deep breath and breathe the clean air. <sighs> Thank you, trees. Trees and forests also help store carbon through a process called carbon sequestration, which helps regulate the Earth's climate. Trees can also catch and absorb rain. When raindrops fall in the forest, trees are there to help slow down the water, let, let it sink in, and prevent it from rushing across the land. In addition, tree roots help prevent from harmful erosion. This helps keep eroded materials and pollution from washing into our rivers, protecting our water flow. Now picture a tree. Do you see anything in it? Maybe a bird on a branch or a squirrel on a trunk? That's right. There are lots of things that rely on trees for both shelter and food, including insects, birds, lizards, mammals, and much more. Finally, Trees provide shade and cooling. My favorite animal is a salamander, and they need shade of the trees over the creeks they live in to keep the water cool. The shade is also important to keep water from drying up in the hot summer months. This is good for people too, so that we have water and shelter from the heat. These are just a few reasons why trees are so important, and thank you for planting a tree. Have fun! All right, so now that you know about the importance of trees, which I bet you already know at least a few of those things, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our instructions for our acorn planting kit. You might have already picked up your kit or you might be on the way, and this is what you will get. So we recommend that you watch this video all the way through just so you can get all of the good tips and tricks. I'm going to go over what to expect in your kit, what to do next, and then the best tips for taking care of your acorn and then your baby tree. So let's get started. Like I said, you've already probably picked up your bag or you're coming to get it. So let's take a look at what we have. You've seen a sneak peek of all of your items and now we're going to take a closer look. First up, we have the bag. We've got our sticker on it. It's probably how you got here. It has the website with these directions to tell you how to plant and take care of your acorns. Your bag is filled with delicious but messy soil for your plants, so make sure to unpack outside or in a location that can be easily cleaned. I'm going to open my bag and see what we got. One of the first things you should see when you open your bag is your nursery box two wax papers and some soil with your acorns. So we have our nursery box. It'll pop up just like this. We'll go through how to put it together with this nursery box bottom in just a couple minutes. Next up, we have two wax paper bags. Set those aside for now. That's our seed bomb material. Then here you can see our delicious soil for our plants. Plus the stars of the show are two beautiful acorns. So let's talk a little bit about our acorns. One at a time, give them a close look. What do you notice about them? We are going to look for some of the signs of damage next. That will help to give us an idea if this acorn is going to grow or not. Look closely. Do you see any small holes or pinholes 
that looked like someone took a sewing needle and created holes in the acorn. A healthy acorn should not have many signs of holes. Shake the acorn. Do you hear any rattling? A healthy acorn should not rattle. Squeeze the acorn. Does it feel squishy at all? A healthy acorn should not squish, but feel nice and firm. If any of your acorns have holes, rattle, or feel squishy, then they are likely unhealthy. This could potentially be because they did not completely form or they have been damaged by insects. These unhealthy acorns are good to dissect. You can be an investigator taking apart the seed to find out what went wrong. Once our seeds have passed these tests, we are going to get them the final test, the float test. Find a container, like a large cup or bowl, to fill with water. This container should be deep enough that your acorns have room to float and sink, and big enough that you can easily get them in and out. Once filled with water, place your acorns in. If an acorn floats, you can see what mine are doing. Once again, it's likely unhealthy, potentially because they did not completely form or because they have been damaged by insects. So I'm gonna take that one out. You can see one of mine is sinking nice and staying there, and that one is probably good. Leave your acorns in the water overnight or for about 12 hours. If after 12 hours your acorn floats, then that's still not a healthy acorn. If your acorn sinks and stays sunk all night long, it is good to plant. And this overnight water soaking has helped to wake it up, letting it know that it is time to grow. First, we need a container to hold our soil and acorns. Let's set up our nursery box. You can use tape or with an adult, use a hot glue gun to secure the bottom to our nursery box. To plant our acorns, we want to reproduce what would happen in nature. There's not a shovel digging deep holes for every acorn, is there? Nope. The acorns just fall to the ground and the rest is up to them. Let's pretend our acorns are just falling to the ground. So we're taking our nursery box. I measured my tape. And now I'm going to put my bottom on top. It's a little tricky, so you might need some help but I like to put my tape on first, make sure I had the adjustments, line it up and start taping all the way around. Making sure to get both sides of my bottom on the outside. If I feel like it's not secure enough, I could also put another piece of tape over the bottom. All right, it feels good. Let's turn it over and see if it stands up. looks pretty good. Next we are going to fill the box with soil. This is that messy part. Make sure to hold your box so it doesn't tip over. Start filling it up and as it gets full you can pat it down some more soil fits. All right, look at all that yummy soil. I have a little bit extra over here that I had from my bag, so I'm just going to fill it all the way up, not pack it too tight, and make a little indentation for my acorn. Remember, we want it to be just like in nature, it would just fall from the tree. So it'll just lay on its side, right on the surface. Now my acorn is perfectly in its soil, and we won't cover it up either. Next up is to find a good spot for your acorn to grow. A good spot is a spot that gets sun, but not all day. These acorns are happiest in fresh air, so outside is good, someplace like a patio, porch, or yard. If you don't have any of those options, that's okay. A window will do. How often you water will depend on the weather. You'll have to do a bit of investigation here. Every day, feel your soil. If it feels like it's getting dry, give it a little bit of water. If it still feels a little moist, like if the soil sticks to your finger, it probably does not need water right now. This will be something you'll check every day, and you can write down 
what you find in your investigation journal. All right, so now we are going to do our seed ball kit. I have two wax paper bags that contain all the items that I need. I also have a bowl of water with me in case I need a little more wetness. So you can see in there I have my seeds and in here I have my clay. I'll go ahead and get this out. This has all the nutrients that my seeds will need to grow. I can tell it feels a little dry, it doesn't quite stick together, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water. And since it's windy out, I'm going to set my bag down. All right, so I'm going to flatten my dime-sized amount of material out in the palm of my hand, and then I'm going to dump all my native seeds into my hand as well. All I'll need is about one to five seeds in my seed ball. Putting my seeds into the middle of my flattened out clay. See them all there? Now I'm going to roll it up, roll it around in the palm of my hands, and I've got my perfect seed ball. Make sure the seeds are nicely nestled in. Now you can place your seed ball in a sunny spot to dry for at least a day or two. Once it's dry, the clay will be a little brittle. This is perfect. Why do we use seed balls? Well, there are a couple reasons. Seed balls are awesome for helping us scatter seeds on hillsides or other places that are difficult to get to. The ball shape makes it easy to throw, plus the brittle clay will shatter when it hits the ground, scattering seeds in that area. Also, the clay and soil help disguise the seeds from hungry birds. Once the seed balls are dry, you can throw them in your yard or bring them with you to a San Diego River Park event in the future, and the seeds will be ready to grow before the next rainstorm. Hi, I hope that you had fun making your acorn kit and your seed ball. I have both of mine right here ready to go. Once again, I'll just let my acorn stay in a nice sunny spot, but not too much sun, preferably in an outside place. Checking that soil, watering it before it starts to dry out. Now these acorns could take up to a few months to grow. So if you're not seeing any action until about December or January, that's okay. Just keep taking good care of your little acorn and it'll grow into a baby tree. Feel free to contact us if you need any help. For your seed ball, you can just let that dry out for a day or two and then place it wherever is a good spot for some native flowers. Thank you again for helping us take part in Clean Air Day 2020. Please feel free to check out our website, sandiegoriver.org, for any additional information about the San Diego River. And please feel free to come out to our future events where we will hopefully be planting some of our baby trees up in our preserves and the headwaters of the San Diego River near Julian. Thank you, everybody, and thank you to our sponsors.